Greetings, my wonderful Facebook family. This is your main man and your best friend, Johnny Cash, and we are live. Okay, so you're like, man, you're still up? Yeah, yeah, I'm still up. I'm going in. I'm going hard. And before we get started, let me just say that I do not own the rights to this music. All right, we got Master Molly doing his thing. Yes, we do. Absolutely. Beautiful thing. So, uh, let me see here. All right. So now, Shannon, thank you for chiming in with us. Great to see you. All right, we're doing a part two of our earlier broadcast, that being the world's oldest calendar and the four ages of man. Beverly, thank you for chiming in. It's great to see you. We're including a diss to Santos Bonacci as well, and we'll revisit that subject in just a moment. Let me start off by giving a shout out to my teacher, the Arch, the Arch Angel Metatron. Metatron is what is called an Arch Angel. Let me explain. Metatron is a man, but he is an immortal, right? Okay. Your archangels, let me say this another way. Your immortals are called in certain circles, archangels. Now, when you define the word arch, it means something that supports the weight of something else. All right. So an arch angel is an immortal being whose job it is to support the weight of the individual that he has been charged to assist. And the individual is called an angel. An angel is a conscious man or woman, boy or girl, who has received their message from the fifth dimension. That's right. They are messengers. That's what the term angel means. A messenger. Right? An angel is not a spirit. An angel is a human being that has knowledge of self and purpose and has received their divine message for the world. They are supported by our arch angels. I, I have to remind myself to pronounce it arch. A lot of, lot of people pronounce it archangel. No, it's arch angel. An arch is different from an arch. All right? It's an arch angel. That which supports our weight. Metatron supports my weight. I'm heavy. You see, I need him as my support. How does he support me? All right. He's my chief of security 
That's one level of support. He gives me encouragement. <clears throat> he gives me wisdom in the form of formulas to properly articulate the message given to me from the fifth dimension. You see, it's one thing to have a message. It's another thing to know how to communicate it, to transmit it, you see, right? So the message becomes the knowledge, but the, the technique by which one executes that message is wisdom. And my arch angel, Metatron, provides me with the wisdom whereby I can properly and appropriately execute and deliver the message assigned to me from the fifth dimension. All right. So, I want to give him a shout out this morning because he gave me, he did give me the the method by which to articulate the message that is just, oh my God, burning in my heart to share with everyone this morning. I tried to go to bed, but it wasn't happening because I had this message <laughs> that I wanted to share a part two to what I shared earlier, all right? Okay, so now let's let's get into this thing, right? Okay, now, let's do this. Okay, give me just a second. Give my bearings here. All right, bada boom, bada bing. Now then, if you were, if you will, if you were with us earlier, I talked about the four ages. The Golden Age, the Silver Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. All right. So those are those ages that many are familiar with from their studies of Roman mythology. All right. <clears throat> In... Hindu cosmology, these same ages are called yugas, right? Okay. But what's interesting about them, Beverly, thank you for chiming in. Great to see you. Oh, yeah, Beverly, it's definitely on my page. You know, you can scroll down after we're done and check it out. You're going to absolutely love it. Okay. All right. Now, if you've, if you've looked up or researched the subject matter of yugas, you're going to find some very interesting information. Now, in part one earlier, I mentioned that the halls of academe, the universities, the professors, the teachers of higher learning in the, uh, and the colleges and universities, they are not going to give you the right information with respect to these ages because if you have the right data, you will be ahead of the game. You will know what the future holds. And it is not, it is not, and I repeat, it is not in the best interest of the powers that be to have you briefed on the future because now they lose the leverage that they have by virtue of your ignorance. So they can use scare tactics and tell you all kind of craziness is gonna happen in the future because NASA told us they spotted a comet coming this way and we need another $50 billion to fund a space yada yada in order to avert the pin
impending danger. Get the flip out of here. I just happen to have master intelligence on the Yugas because Johnny Cash made it his business to see to it that I got that data and I'm cool, thank you. I know what the future holds for the world and for me, you see. So that's the advantage of having this highly specialized knowledge, all right? Okay, so in our earlier broadcast, we talked about the connection between our ancient calendar, the world's oldest calendar, which I call the Asiatic World Cycle Calendar, right? Now, why do I call it the Asiatic World Cycle Calendar? Because in the Kabbalah, which is a part of ancient culture, there are four worlds. The lowest world is called Asiya or Ashia, which we pronounce as Asia. Now, what does it mean? It means the world of form. Everything that one can contact with their five objective faculties is known as the world of Ashia or Asia, right? So the Asiatic world cycle calendar is the time continuum that pertains to the earth plane and all beings and things therein. I'm going to let that soak in on you. That's right. It pertains to the earth plane. This calendar gives us the key to all of the forces that are at work every day within a 25,920 year cycle called the Great Year or the Asarian Year. All right? Okay now. All right. So, let me backpedal just for a moment and share something with you that my teacher, Metatron, taught me. He taught me that there is a 98 to 2 ratio. I know that looks, that's in reverse because I'm putting it in the camera, but in your mind, flip it and put the 98 where the two is and put the two where the 98 is. And of course, there's a colon right here. 98 to two ratio. This ratio is what he called the universal ratio. That means that the ratio of 98 to two exists throughout the universe in various categories and departments of life. I'm gonna give you one such example of that. There is 98% dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter and dark energy make up 98% of the universe. 2% of the universe consists of what we call matter. All right? The stuff that we can see, feel, taste, smell, touch, 
here, right? Did I say C? Okay. C, hear, smell, taste, touch. Right? Starting with the eyes. Behind the eyes are the ears. Right below the ears are the nose. Smell. Right beneath the nose is the tongue. Taste. And beneath the tongue are the hands. Touch. See? That's how we know the order of our senses. So the vibratory rate from highest to lowest are sight, highest, next, hearing, next, smell, next, taste, and last, touch. Okay? That's how we know the order. All right. So now, now let's go in. In the four ages of man, which in Roman mythology are called the Golden Age, here, the Silver Age, here, the Bronze Age, here, and the Iron Age, here. Okay, now, into my dis to Santos Bonacci. Mr. Bonacci said that as we progress through these ages, as we ascend and as we descend, on the descent, humanity let me back it up. Get my get my chart back. Get my chart back. All right. Humanity is functioning at one hundred percent consciousness. All right. One hundred percent cosmic. Consciousness. Okay? That's not what he said. He said global consciousness, but my research tells me that we're not on a globe, so you can't call it global consciousness. But what's happening is we are we are connected to the cosmic or the cosmos by virtue of the fact that the stars are rotating counterclockwise above the earth plane. And whenever there is clockwise spiral motion, you have a pull away from a center, right? The earth plane is our center. So by the heavens rotating counterclockwise, it is drawing our consciousness up away from the earth plane and into the cosmos or the universe, you see. So to that extent, we are increasing in our universal consciousness. All right. Bonacci says that during the golden age, human consciousness, human universal consciousness is at 100%. Yes, he said that. He said, then as we transition from the golden age into the silver age, the consciousness is reduced by 25% and it is now at 75%. He then said, then we transition from the silver age to the bronze age at 50% universal consciousness. And then 
by the time we reach the Iron Age, we're at 25% consciousness. That's what he said. He said that. But he's dead wrong. Well, well, why is he dead wrong, Brother Cash? He's dead wrong because he doesn't have all the he doesn't have all the data. He doesn't have all the data. He's he's operating from a paradigm that has a sun revolving around Sirius and Sirius meeting up with the sun every so many years and then they move away from each other. All right? Not only that, Because he has no knowledge of the Asiatic world cycle calendar, calendar, the world's oldest calendar, there's certain fundamentals that he does not have. And so he's miscalculating the percentage of the consciousness that is at play as we make our transitions through these different ages of man. Okay, let me explain what I mean by this. I'm not going to be before you long, but I am going to be before you strong because you absolutely must get this information. <clears throat> now, remember, in the in the golden age as it is called in roman mythology it is called the satya yuga in hindu cosmology and it is the age of peace justice truth and perfection. It is the age where giants roam the earth. That is when the giants that we have found the remains of through archaeological finds, that is when these beings roamed the earth in mass, they now roam the earth under cover. They must stay out of the way because we're in a different age. All right. Just walk with me on this journey this morning. I'm going to give you some good stuff. Okay, now. Remember the 98 to 2 ratio that Metatron taught me. It's a 98 to 2 ratio. Throughout the universe. Right? Okay, remember now. We said that during the golden age, you have the immortals also with us who roam the earth without having to conceal themselves. They can speak plainly about the fact that they are immortals because everyone is in an exalted state of consciousness, right? Okay. Now, where are the immortals coming from? How do we get the immortals? I'm glad you asked. And how many are there compared to the masses? 
during the golden age or during any age. All right. At any given time, you have a 98 to 2 ratio of humans to immortals, meaning that 98% of those beings who walk the earth, humanoids, 98% of them are mortals. 2% are immortals, right? So how does that break down mathematically? All right, then. Right now, we have about 7.5 billion people. Let's say for the sake of argument, there were 10 billion, right? What's 1% of 10 billion? 1% of 10 billion would be 100 million. 2% of 10 billion would be 200 million. All right. So for every 10 billion people on the earth, 200 million will be immortals. Make sense? But the difference between now and the golden age is the 200 million immortals will be able to disclose their immortality publicly without there being an issue. Now they don't. They only do it within the confines of a secret society. Or on a case-by-case -case basis when they get assigned to an angel and then they communicate who they are to that individual. You see. All right? Okay, now. That's how that goes. All right, so now watch this. Now let's talk about how they became immortals. They became immortals because they completed their reincarnations or they accelerated their personal evolution by study and exercise of their secret faculties, okay? That is the purpose of the priesthood, the indigenous priesthoods and secret societies of the world. They are set up to teach men and women how to accelerate their evolution so that they can escape what is called the will of karma so that they do not require all of the incarnations that one would have to undergo in order to attain their immortality. All right? Now, the way that works is like this. If a person did not get initiated into the priesthood or a secret society, they would attain immortality after 100 incarnations. Shout out to Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Great to see you, my queen. Okay, now, after 144 incarnations, if you did not receive initiation into a traditional indigenous priesthood or a secret society, you would become an immortal after you completed your 144 incarnations. Now, time-wise, what are we looking at? Every human being is wired to live 144 years. This is because of certain universal laws that are based on the number 12. 
Why is it based on the number 12? Because you have 12 chakras. And these chakras correspond to the 12 planes in the universe. That's why. 12 times 12 is 144. And that is why you are wired to live 144 years. Now, let's say you die at 72. Then you spend 72 years in the afterworld and complete your education over there so that it will equal the 144. And the following year, you are reincarnated. This happens 144 times. Once that cycle is completed, you become an immortal. So, all of the immortals walking the earth plane are here because they have completed their cycles of reincarnation. Or, they have accelerated the process through initiatic teaching and practice. This is where you get the immortals from. And at any given time on the earth, there will be 2% of humanoids who are immortals. 98% will be mortals. Now, having said that, in the golden age, Mr. Bonacci says that everybody's at 100%. That's incorrect. This is how it goes. When we are at year one in our 25,920 year cycle, when we are at year one, the earth plane is in its golden age and the energies of the earth plane are at 100% cosmic consciousness but let me tell you what happens let me tell you what happens when we get to year one two percent of the humans are immortals and they are at 100 percent naturally but the 98 percent who are mortals are a new breed of souls, all of whom are entering their first incarnation in the earth plane. And they could not possibly be at 100% consciousness because they're new. Well, then what level are they at? I'm glad you asked. We have 144 levels of consciousness that are available to us, but we are not functioning at all of those levels when we first enter into the earth plane on our journey. We're at level one because we're just getting into the game. But guess what? We've entered, we've entered in the golden age. So even though as a new soul, we are at level one in our 144 levels of consciousness, we have the 100% cosmic conscious saturation of the earth to sustain us. It's like a baby being able to walk around unaccosted because we're in the golden age. And the lion can lie down with the lamb. That's the kind of energy that is at work during the golden age. All right? Okay, now. So, the way this works is that as 
we prog progress through the golden age. We ascend in levels of consciousness. Each of these ages is responsible for 18 levels of consciousness. So, based on the laws of reincarnation, by the time the earth plane has made its transition from the golden age to the silver age, the masses, the new souls that have just been born into the earth plane, starting at year one of our 25,920 year cycle. They are all, by the close of the golden age, at the 18th level of consciousness. They're moving up, they're elevating, they're making their ascent in consciousness, even though the earth plane is on a descending journey through the 25,920 year cycle. How do I know that? I know that because all creation takes place in darkness. And this is the dark phase of our 25,920 year cycle. The darkness increases starting with the golden age at year one. And for the first half of that great cycle, although it is a cycle on the decline, the consciousness effects are that human mass consciousness is elevating, right? And it is because of this elevation being at the 18th level by the close of our first trip through the golden age that the legal age of mortals is 18 years. That's where you're getting the year 18 from. That's when you went out and started raising hell. As soon as you turned 18, you when you at home, what, what did you always say when your parents pissed you off? Oh, shit, I can't wait till I'm 18. And when you turned 18, you couldn't wait for your next incarnation so you can come back as a baby. Because when you had to make your own money and pay your own bills and buy your own food and buy your own clothes, you said, damn, mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Got to be more careful in what I pray for. Got to be more careful in what I wish for. Right? Okay, so now. All right. Let's take this another further. Shall we? All right, now. So as we make our, our, our track through these different ages or yugas, as they are called in Hindu cosmology. The mass consciousness elevates by 18 levels so that by the time we complete our trek through the Silver Age, we're not at 75% like Bonacci said, but we're at the 36th plane of consciousness, you see, right? So 
if you wanted to break it down as far as percentages, okay, what happens is this. As we ascend in consciousness during the time that we decline in the great cycle. It doesn't go down like Bonacci said, but it goes up because what Bonacci didn't get is that all creation takes place in darkness during the times when conditions are getting darker and darker and darker. That is, that is the catalyst in which your consciousness is going higher and higher and higher so that if we did it based on the percent concept, your consciousness by the close of the golden year has raised by 12 and a half percent. By the close of the silver year, it has, it has raised to 25 percent. By the close of the bronze year, let me get back to my diagram. By the end of the bronze year, you add another 12 and a half percent. And by the end of the iron year, the mass consciousness is 50% capacity. At 50% capacity, the masses are at level 72 in their consciousness. Now that's by the close of the Iron Age. Now in our earlier broadcast, I showed you the math of where we are right now. We're in the middle of the ascending Bronze Age, right? So you take that 50% plus another 12 and a half percent, right? And you have 60, 70, Five percent. Actually, you have uh, you got fifty, and then you got uh, sixty, seventy, yeah, seventy-five percent. Right now, we're at uh, we're at eighty. For all practical purposes, ninety percent. If my if my if my calculations are right, wish to God I had my calculator in front of me, I could do this thing like a whiz. But uh, basically, we are we are we are pretty we've we've made significant gains because right now, okay, right now, okay, we finished. The Iron Age on the ascent, so we're we're past the 90th level. All right. So if we said um, that's 90 plus another, oh that 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 would be something else. We're like half of 18, which is nine. So let's just say 99. We're like. Not, we're at the, the 99th level of consciousness, right? Okay, so you can do the math on what we are. Just remember that it's it's 12 and a half percent for each of these levels, okay? All right, so, all right now.
having said that, having said that, let's go somewhere else now. A lot of people are thinking that we have to, let me say that another way. A lot of people are saying, get ready, folk. We're, we're headed toward the age of Aquarius. Let me tell you what's wrong with that. What's wrong with that is that there are 13 constellations and not 12. And so to think that we're moving toward the age of Aquarius leaves out the fact that there was a 13th constellation that has been removed from the mathematics. All right? That creates a problem once you reinsert that constellation, which is called Ophiuchus. You can Google that. Ophiuchus. Right? Use your phonetics and spelling. It's something like O P H I U C H U S. O P U C H U S. The symbol of that constellation is the caduceus. It's called the caduceus of Hermes, or the, the or the or the staff of Tahuti. It's the same symbol that you see used by the medical association. All right? That is our 13th constellation. Okay. Now, when you do the math, when you do the math for the 13 constellations, you come up with approximately 199 years for each age. Right? And when you multiply that times 13, you get your 25,920 years. So let me explain to you what the problem is with expecting to enter the age of Aquarius. When you reintroduce Ophiuchus, which is the 13th constellation, and the 13th sign of the zodiac, because we have 13 months. We have 13 months, and each month corresponded to and does correspond to a constellation in the heavens, one of the 13 constellations. So once you add the, the original 13th constellation, we have passed Aquarius. Yes, we have. We have passed Aquarius. And based on the ancient axiom, as above, so below, we know that just like our new year begins on the day of the autumn equinox, which is the first day of the sign of Libra, we know that as if, if as above, so below is true, and it is, then that means that the clock starts in our great cycle in the constellation of Libra. So that Libra becomes the first constellation of every new great cycle of 25,920 years. And Ophiuchus, Ophiuchus is the last constellation in that great cycle. So now, what that means is this. You cannot make your forecast based on a, how do I want to call that, model that only consists of 12 signs of the zodiac because they're 13. 
you want your, your calculations to be right and exact, right? So you must include the 13th constellation. And once you do that, you find that you have approximately 2,000 years per sign. So now, bearing that in mind, remember now, we're in the year 16,023 in our Asiatic World Cycle Calendar. Okay? Now, we started this journey in year one in the sign of Libra. 16,023 years ago. So let's see what sign we should be on taking under consideration the fact that we have 13 constellations which take approximately 2,000 years to make our journey through. So we start at Libra and that's two. We then move from Libra to Scorpio, which is four. That's the 4,000th year. From Scorpio to Sagittarius, that's three. That's the third sign. Now you at 6,000 years. Then Capricorn. That's 8,000 years. Then Aquarius, that's 10,000 years. For well, people, we pass through Aquarius 6,000 years ago because we're in year 16,000. And we, we pass through the, the age of Aquarius in the year 10. I said 10 with a T, in the year 10,000 in our Asiatic world cycle calendar. We've been through with Aquarius people. You see how the system has you all misconstrued, has you misconstruing the time. That's by design, people. This is not by accident. Everybody hooping and hollering about Aquarius. We've been done with Aquarius. Been done. Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, baby. That was 6,000 years ago, folks. We're done with Aquarius. Okay. Got some more good news for you. From Aquarius, you go to the age of Pisces. That's, that's 12,000. That's, that's the year 12,000, the age of Pisces. All right. After Pisces is Aries, that's the year 14,000. Right? What's next? The age of Taurus. That brings us into the year 16,000, people. We're in the age of Taurus right now. In the age 16,000, in the year 16,023 in our Asiatic world cycle calendar. Now, how do I know that this is right and exact? I'll tell you how I know. I know this because... <laughs> Taurus is the age of the bull. And the bull is the grand symbol of the priesthood. And the priesthoods are strong in the earth, in this age. And I'll tell you something else. Huh. I'm a Shriner. And the International Order of Shriners was created 
roughly a hundred years ago. And yes, it would have been during the age of Taurus. And guess what the symbol, the grand symbol of the Shriners is. You can Google it, Google images of it. You'll see, you'll see the full moon. Not, I didn't mean to say that. What I meant to say is you, you'll see something that looks like that. It's, it's like, it's the horns of a bull. The horns of a bull. That's the grand symbol of the Shriners. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You see. So, signs and symbols are for the conscious mind. And you discover hidden secrets when you study the science of symbols. You see. Right? So, make no mistake, people. We are in the age of Taurus, okay? And so that's in the 16,000 years, which is where we are now, okay? And we're in the beginning of Taurus. We're in the beginning of Taurus. Now, in 2,000 years, we'll go into the year, I'm sorry, we'll go into the sign or the constellation of Gemini. And then in the 20,000th year, we'll be in the constellation Cancer. 22nd thousand year, we'll be in Leo. The 24th year, we'll be in Virgo and then in the 26,000 year or 25,920 year we will be moving out of Ophiuchus the last constellation in our great world cycle calendar now I had a thought about sharing some additional information concerning these yugas, but I tell you what, I'm just going to mention them by, by reference. The first one that corresponds to the Golden Age is called the Satya Yuga. The second one corresponding to the Silver Age is called the Dwapara Yuga. The third one corresponding to the Bronze Age is called the Tetra Yuga, and the fourth one corresponding to the Iron Age is called the Kali Yuga. All right, now when you study this out, they're going to flip it. They're going to give you misinformation. They're going to give you the second one third, and the third one second. Don't drink the Kool-Aid because the order is in the order that I gave you. Again, Satya Yuga, then the Dwapara Yuga, next the Treta Yuga, because Tre means three. So you can't have a, a three word coming second. No, that was to throw you off, right? Also, when you deal with the duration of the Yugas, don't believe the hype when they tell you that the Satya, the, the Satya Yuga equals 1,728,000 human years. The, the Dwapara Yuga equals 864,000. And the other one is 1,200,000. And the other one is 432,000. Don't believe that garbage because that's what they call, that's what you call a blind. That's something to throw you off. Those are not years. They, those those numbers really represent breathing cycles that an initiate is taught by a yogi master in order to attain higher levels of consciousness 
to accelerate their evolution so that they can escape the wheel of karma. All right? So ain't no such thing as a million human years equaling these four cycles. They are based on the time frames that I gave you. Remember that each cycle, each of these four cycles takes 3,702 years to complete. That's it. That's all. Okay, now listen to our uh, first broadcast on this subject matter, which was part one. And I feel like the, 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 the world has lifted off my shoulders this morning because I absolutely had to bring this information to you so that you can begin to chart your course by the vision in your heart, you see. All right, now, in closing, take this information, meditate on it, do your research using the information I've shared with you as your, your model, you see. Did I say meditate on it? If I didn't, I'm saying it now. Meditate on it. Make this knowledge your own. I'm going to periodically share another piece, an additional piece to this puzzle of the world's oldest calendar, our ancient Asiatic world cycle calendar. And having said that, I'm going to absolutely see you. And yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I really do mean you at the top. Good day and God bless.